Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. Today we're going to continue on working in our very large scrapbook album. This is the Basically Amazing Foundations size A. So there's four sizes, A, B, C, and D. A is the largest and D is the smallest. So this one is A. This one is the largest. And we've gotten this far, so far, one half of the first fin is what we've gotten gotten what we have accomplished so far <laughs> I have a playlist specifically for this album the paper collection is prima pretty mosaic this is the collection we're using so the playlist is uh, a pretty mosaic basically amazing so it's up here I'll link it up here and down below it starts with an introduction to the templates shows you a flip through of all of my prototypes uh, the add-on photo mats and then I think it starts with the covers or what we're going to be using and some prep and then the covers and so on and so forth so if you want to start from the beginning, hit that playlist and you can skip the first couple if you've already seen the introduction to the templates. The templates are available in my Etsy shop, have that link down below. And so this is where we left off last. So we had, um, let's see, we did the foiling on the envelope, which by the way, I don't remember if I actually said it on the video. But if you don't have a laser printer or you don't have access to going to some place like um, Office Depot or Office Supply where they can print off the black um, backgrounds onto your paper, if you don't have access to that, that's okay. Instead of doing what I did with the script and foiling that script, you could literally just take your glue stick and go all the way around the edges and do it just like we did, um, just like we did this piece right here, this beautiful and add the foil accents that way, okay? So you can still, if you wanted to, you could still print the black script onto the back of, or actually onto the envelope there, and then just add the foiling around the edges if you'd like. I just wanted to make sure that you knew that there was other alternatives you can do besides, you know, foiling the script itself. Because there, some people don't have laser printers, some people don't have access to that type of uh, service because it has to be a laser toner based ink in order for the foil to attach to it that way when you print something off so if you don't have that um, you'll have to take it somewhere and if you can't take it somewhere then you'll have to just add your foil accents around the edges and things so I think it would be just as beautiful if you did that as well okay so I just kind of wanted to throw that out there um, so we did that, and we did. We added the second part of the pocket, the envelope, to here to the back of that. We got a five by seven page, and then we've got this envelope or this envelope. <laughs> we matted the back of this page with the light wood, and then we cut the slit there. And I just added a few little insert, like we did here, that you know where we added the foil around the edges. That looks super, super pretty. So it adds a little bit of something, something. Uh, without having to print it out onto the laser with the laser printer. You see what I'm saying? You can add it with your glue stick. Okay, so we're going to start on this side of the fin in this video. And I'm going to, I'm still trying to list everything, all of the main pages that I print out. I'm trying to list them down in the description box. So it might say, you know, page 8B, uh, small stripe. You know, one of page 8B, small stripe in the description box and anything else that I print off like that. But I won't be adding the mats, the page numbers for the mats and things. But I am still trying to do that. So um, you may want to check down below if you want to print everything off, if you're following me exactly. If you're not, then it doesn't, then you're okay. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but the first thing I wanted to point out is I did print another 8B just like this one so i printed it in the small stripe and it's going to be the first thing that attaches to this fin right here like this and i did the exact same thing i haven't made any inserts for it yet but i put i matted it with the light wood and then i cut the slit or the slot however you want to put it the exact same way as we did in this video so i'll link that video up here and down below if you want to go check that out really quick but i just i did the exact same thing except it's going to go on this side of the fin matter of fact we probably if i wanted to we could go ahead and add this on here let's do that really quick before we go any further 
So I'm taking 3 8 inch, this is a score tape. And using my new fancy tool. I kind of dig it. I kind of dig it. I like using it to help me with my tape. All right. And then we're going to burnish that really good. We're going to take the tape backing off. This is such a large album, it's hard to maneuver it uh, around um, there we go. Around my table and under the camera and under the lights and things. Not as much room. I'm going to ink those edges just real quick because just in case those are seen. Okay. So now we've got, so like in the last album, we ended up putting four by six photo mats here. And I think that turned out really pretty. It's just to have something, more room for more photos. Okay. So I think that is, is good. That's a good idea. Okay. So again, I haven't made any inserts for that yet, but um, I might just leave it for now. And maybe if we have leftovers, because that's all this was, was leftover pieces from other elements that we've already done. So maybe we'll wait and see what we have left over that we can stick in there. Okay. So next up, I printed, whoops, my stick, my tape is, uh, isn't sticking as well as it used to. I printed one page of 7A. So this is the main base page for this size album, page 7A. This is what the guide looks like when you print off the guide sheets. Um, it has all the information on there. And then this is the mat for that page. That's why it's sticking over top of that. But this is page 7A and I printed it in with the small stripe. I cut it out like this. So I cut three tabs off and left one long tab. So I've got the small stripe and I haven't done anything to the back side yet. I don't think I've done anything to it, period. I might have just put the tape on it. I can't remember. Okay. Well, anyway, I, I have a plan. I just can't remember why I didn't ink that back side. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> the next thing I printed was page 9C. So this is the main base page for the C size album. And here is what I did. So I cut this part away and then I cut this long tab off and left the two short tabs. We're going to use this as a big belly band and I inked it and scored it and taped it already. So I'm going to put this in my large scraps. So we're going to be using that as a belly band, a large belly band. And then page 13C is this page. So it kind of looks like this. So this is how I cut this down. I cut this part away, even, even the long tab off of this page, I cut that away. And then I cut the other long tab off and one of the short tabs. So this is going to be, I think a flip down on that belly band. And then I'm going to put this with the things that we could use later. And then one more thing for right now, page 19 CD. This is what it looks like, and this is how I cut it down. So I separated this top piece. I, I took one of the long tabs off of the bottom piece and the two short tabs, and then scored it, inked it, put tape on the one side. Oh, I didn't, I thought, I don't know why I thought I inked up both sides. I guess I'm going to have to do that. I guess I have to do that now. And then we can put this in the pile of things we can use later. Matter of fact, I think we're going to be using this in the very next video, the back side of this fin. I think that's what this is. We're going to be using that. Okay, I'm going to put this aside for now. Today, you guys, is actually my anniversary. It's been, been married for 28 years today. So, my husband had some running to do, so I'm taking advantage of the quiet time right now. Before we go, we're going to, we have a nice dinner planned. So before we do all of that, I wanted to kind of get some recording time in. So first, let's see, let me do some inking. I thought 
I did the inking, but I obviously didn't. I just, I like to take and get the edges because when you cut white cardstock, so this is just on plain white cardstock. I have it linked in my Amazon list. I have an Amazon list specifically for this project. It's also linked in the description box below. Um, but when you cut the white cardstock, you'll have like a white edge. So you've got that distressed edge, edge that's printed on there, and then you'll have that white edge um, from the cardstock. So, and if you didn't cut it out very good, like I usually don't cut mine out very good. Um, Believe it or not, I'm a really sloppy, like when I'm planning my templates, I'm really good. But when, you know, when I'm working on my templates, I'm really, really good. But when I'm working on my projects, I just get real sloppy. And I don't know why. I guess it's kind of the whole point of, you know, you can, anybody can do this and it does not have to be 100% perfect. You do not have to be 100% perfect in your projects. And I love that. I love that. You also notice that I did tab or notch or whatever you want to call it. These two uh, tabs here. Oh, I am being a little sloppy. Um, let's see. And then maybe I'll go ahead and do this too. I'm trying to think of... What I'm going to be doing on the back side, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to ink it. I already have it planned, but I don't know. I guess I just decided not to ink. And I literally just planned this last night, so it's not like it's been a week, like in my last video, <laughs> where it had been a week since I planned everything. So on the back side of this fin, which I think is actually really not a bad idea, like maybe even a good rule of thumb, is to not um, have a whole lot going on to make the pages super heavy. So that's what I'm going to try to do, because like the, there's the first first side of that fin, and look look how much is going on. So and plus two, I think when you have it like this and you're working it's everything's fine you know everything's flipping nicely and all of that and then when you come to the back side if it's if it's got a lot of bulk if it had the exact same amount of bulk it would be really hard to flip it does that make sense i think i'm making sense i think you guys understand what i'm saying oh and i also wanted to point out i haven't made the side pocket inserts yet i was going to wait to see how many we ended up with and then we'll make them all the same at the end is what I think we'll do. Okay, back to this, back to this, back to this. Did I get this side all? I did. So the first thing is we're gonna have a belly band and I'm trying to decide if I want, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna center it. You don't have to do this. This might, you might, you guys might think this might be a little much, but I'm gonna center, I'm gonna mark the center of this page and this page and that way it looks a little nicer. in the long run. A little bit more pleasing to the eye. I'm not very good about eyeballing things, so. So I'm gonna start on one side. I'm gonna burnish it. So you notice I tabbed these corners too, these edges, just so that you're, they're not seen as much. And since there's, this is just printed on too plain, I don't have to worry about um, ups and downs. Just gonna match my little marks up there. Like that. Flip it around. Oh, I didn't use my glue stick. Match my mark there. Pretty good. All right, I'm gonna erase those little marks. Okay, so now we got a belly band. So there's that piece, and then this piece here, 
we're going to put it down at the bottom. Burnish that. I'm going to I am going to use my glue stick this time. To give myself a little bit of wiggle room. It's a oohoo or yoohoo or a I don't know stick. Use whatever you have. So I'm going to line this bottom edge up. So I got that stuck down. Then we're going to take this one and put this one on the top. So burn that the right way. So you guys are going to have to tell me what's your thoughts on what is your most favorite thing about these templates. Um, I think that one of my most favorite things about this set of templates is there is so much room for photos. Plus, there's so much room for pretty, you know, for the pretty paper. There's room for everything, and I love that. Love, love, love that. Now, look, something looks crooked to me. And it looks as though it's because I cut this piece a little wonky. But that's okay. Burnish that. So now we've got a flip up, a flip down, and we've got that big belly band. Okay, I am gonna add, I am gonna add a magnet to keep this flap here closed. I was thinking about angling these corners, but I don't think I will. Again, down below I've got it linked all my different resources to my magnets and to the magnet savers so if you guys want to check that out they're all linked down below sorry about the glare plus i have a video specifically on those when i bought the magnets and all the magnet savers i will link that up there and down below and the links are below that video as well so i think i'm going to put the magnet on top here and then a magnet saver down here and they do they do save you and i oh look <laughs> I've got too many magnets. I, I ran out of magnets when I was prepping, so I grabbed more. Oh my word. <laughs> and now look what's happening. I cracked myself up. These are just like super thin little discs. It's just amazing. Um, so I might have to put some of them up. I might have too many in my little tray here. So I'm going to put a magnet here. And I think I'll just take some tape on our tape. Because I'm pretty sure there's nothing that's going to interfere with it on the other side of the fin. I'm just going to try to center it just a little. And then I'll put a magnet saver down here on this part. So, should I use a bigger one or a smaller one? And if you watch that video, you know that I bought like all the different sizes that there are. Um, just because I wanted to see what the different sizes were. <laughs> And yeah, I got a ton, so I'm going to be using everything that I bought. Okay. Yeah. So there's not going to be a whole lot of pressure on this to keep this closed. I just wanted it to keep. I just wanted it to stay closed. Okay. So now that we have that, I want to put some tape. I want to secure it with a little bit of tape. So this is quarter of an inch tape. Um, this is scrapbook.com tape. And then same here. Okay. And before we mat this, I'm also going to get the, we have an insert that's um, a large envelope that's part of the templates. So we're going to, we're going to get that stuff out together really quick too. Okay, so what we're gonna need, I printed these on the onto black cardstock. This is 
Recollections black cardstock. I shouldn't kind of help with that glare. I'm going to stick this on the outside of this package just with my tape. So this is the black cardstock that we're using in this album, 65 pound recollections. This is Michael's. Um, you can find it at Michael's. I think it is, uh, is it made specifically for Michael's? It doesn't really say, but I think it is. So I printed just the plain page from 37A from the black cardstock. Where's my scraps from the black cardstock? So there's the piece left over from 37A, so I cut it out, uh, scored it, and that's it. You don't have to ink it because it's black, right? But you can barely see the brown, but you can. It's hard, but you can see it. So there's the scrap for that. And then here is, oops, here's part two. So this is like a large envelope, and then here's the scrap from that. So I keep all my scraps because you never know. You never know. So I left all the tabs on. There's only three tabs. It kind of looks like there might have been one on the one side, but there's not. So this is this, the envelope of part two. So these are this is the two-piece large envelope for the size A album. So I scored those three lines and then put tape on them and then mitered my corners. So this is going to be the insert. The, oh, wait a minute. One more thing. Ha, ha, ha. And then the insert for that envelope is on page 45 AD, and I printed it in light wood. So it looked like that. So this is the actual insert for the envelope, and then this one is an insert for the D size envelope. But we can still use this um, as inserts in this album or in smaller pages, like. Um, like we have earlier on in the fin. So went ahead and cut all those out. You know what? I better leave that mark just in case I decide to mat it because this is on white cardstock, but I printed the light wood. So I'm going to set this aside for things to use because I'm pretty sure we're not going to be using it right now. Um, but in order to put this envelope together, you flip these tabs in and I'm going to burnish. I thought it might be fun to use black cardstock as the base instead of white cardstock for this insert, just to change it up a little bit. So I'm going to take the tape backing off of the bottom one, maybe use a little glue stick for some wiggle room. And then we're going to attach it down here. should fit pretty good and, and sometimes I don't score very well either <laughs> so that could also be a problem and especially it's hard to see with the black cardstock so if it's not 100% perfect don't don't be upset about it just go with the flow no one will ever know no one will ever notice if it's a little off like this is a little off. I'm not sure you're going to be even to be able to tell. It's just a, right there. It's just itty bitty 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 ever so slightly sticking out. Just a little. Maybe you could see it better on that side. But you know what? It's okay. Nobody will notice if we don't tell them. If we don't show them. Right? Okay. So then we got that. And then the insert. We'll go in here. Like that. Plus, you know, you could put extra 4 by 6s or 5 by 7 photos in here. You can use this as storage. You can put um, your journaling inside there. So that's what we got so far. So I've already prepped some of the mats. So let me get that stuff out. Actually, I think I did all of them. I'm almost 100% sure. I'll be right back. So here's kind of what I've got going on. Here is one of the pieces of pattern paper. Um, does it have a right way? We used a part of, well, we used this one side. We used it in another page, but I was thinking about, I traced the mat onto it, 
So I was thinking about putting this here no, and having a four by six photo mat. So these are the add-on photo mats. So that is on page 7BD of the add-on photo mat. So the add-on photo mats looks like this. I'm not using text specifically. Actually, this is just the plain one. Um, so whichever add-on photo mats you have, I'm using 7BD in the plain. So I thought we would do that there. And then down here on this big flap here, we could just do a five by seven photo mat and that is on page one ac so these both all of the photo mats here are just plain uh, printed onto copy paper just really cheap flimsy copy paper not cardstock and there really just isn't a point to have it on cardstock because you're going to be putting a photo over top anyway so i stamped them with the with the numbers so you know which which size um a photo to put and then here's, this is part of the 6x6 paper collection. So I traced the mat for this this 19 CD. I traced that onto there because you can tell it's a smaller pattern. So I thought this would be pretty on the back side of this little flip up. This is so hard to see. It's such a long. So I thought that's kind of what that would look like once I get that all down, right? And everything's inked up and ready to go. So I thought we would do that like that. And then on this front part here, well first I thought we would do another 5x7 photo here on the front there. See it's, it's, wouldn't that be so pretty to have a beautiful photo, 5x7 photo there? I just think, I just love matting the pages with photos. I just love it. Okay, so then this is a piece from that cut off piece, that pa paper we've been cutting things out of, fussy cutting things out of. This was not up there, this was down here. Um, I cut a few things out. Um, and one of the other things we're going to be using on the back side or on the envelope, I think. Um, but this was here, and this was here, and then that beautiful was here, uh, and then another piece that I cut out up here, I think we're going to be using on the envelope. But I just wanted to show you, I'm slowly <laughs> cutting bits and pieces out of this paper, which is the one that's got the really pretty um, tiles on the back. But we're not going to be using that one right now, I don't think. Um, but anyway, so I cut this out. I fussy cut around and I inked it up. I thought that was super cute. And then um, I have myself a little post-it note here because I thought we would mat the page with this and then put this on top like that. So I just thought that would just look really good, right? And remember, we're doing minimal, we're doing very minimal uh, embellishing right now. I thought it might be fun to put a flower here. I don't know, but we're gonna have to wait because this is going to be up next to a flat surface in the album. So we're going to have to wait and see. That's why I'm kind of waiting to the end to do a lot of the bulkier embellishing. But I do kind of think about it ahead of time. So we could maybe do um, a flower here or we could do a wax seal here or something like that. I thought that would be cute. But this piece here, this is, this can either be the shades of color this is available in my Etsy shop. That's what the listing looks like. This could be the shades of color in number 25 if you wanted to use your shades of color. Or it could be the pastel green, the vintage collage pastel green, the solid green sheet that's part of that collection. So you get four um, patterns and then you get a coordinating, mostly solid uh, color, solid sheet with that. So I printed this also is just on regular copy paper. I printed uh, one of these off and I think I'm going to use the other part of this because it fit perfectly on the envelope. So not a whole lot's going to go wasted on that. So you have two choices. You can either use the, um, the pastel green or you can use the shades of color. Whichever one you happen to have or even, even further, if you had a solid color cardstock that matched this collection, use that many many options okay so i traced this mat out onto there so this is what we got do we like that do, do we do we like that i think we do so i think we're going to add everything down we're going to go ahead and add everything down so let's see should i add this on here first i thought about even doing something to the corners maybe rounding the corners we haven't done any rounding i thought that might look kind of pretty or should we try to round the corners or should we leave it we got here 
there's my rounder, my rounder. <laughs> we could do just the quarter of an inch one, which is the smaller one. I wonder what that would look like. Does this have an up and a down? I guess worst case scenario, we don't like it and and we have to leave it. I don't know. I kind of like those little bit of rounded. So that's a We Are Memory Keepers. This one just has rounded corners. There's a quarter of an inch. Oops. Probably should have done this first. Wow. There's a quarter of an inch and then there is a half an inch. We're using the smaller one. And then this piece here. Doesn't look like I traced very well because it's not it's not straight. <laughs> oh goodness. There we go. Good enough. Alright, let me ink those corners up real fast. I don't know, it's just to give it something, you know, and since there's not a photo mat there, I think it'd be cute. Okay. I'm going to take the tape backing off of here, off this magnet, really quick. And I'm just going to use my ATG, my Scotch Advanced Tape Glider. also have a better resource for, for uh, refills on this specific pink ATG. Um, I'll have it linked down below. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good bang for your buck, and they're really fast shipping. So... If you're like me and you're enjoying your ATG, then it's a good resource. Then should we, I'm gonna go ahead and attach this to there. So it's really hard doing this minimal embellishing, um, but I think it's worth it in the end. I think it ends up making a more cohesive album in the end. I think it just ends up working out better. Let's put this one, let's mount the back side of this. I like doing a little bit of embellishing and then coming back and doing more embellish. Oh, I think I meant to do this the other way, but that's okay. Oops, did you hear my puppy? Okay. Yeah, that looks good. And then this one is going to be matted with this 5x7 photo. I'm going to remove the tape backing off of here. And you'll notice I'm not even inking these edges because I didn't trim them out very well. I'm not even inking. Is it going to focus? Those edges, look, I even, it's like, I don't know, it's like 1 32nd of an inch. <laughs> not even inking them. But I think it's okay because there's white around it, so you, don't, you can't even tell. So it's just a time saver by not inking those. And it's hard to ink copy weight paper. What do you guys think? And you can see the magnet saver through this copy weight paper, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that because there's going to be a photo going on top of that. So I'm totally fine with it. Do you guys think it's okay too? I think it's okay. But if you don't if you don't like that, then this would be the time you would want to put your photo, your add-on photo mats, you would want to print them on cardstock so that you couldn't see that magnet, that specific magnet. Saver, because you can kind of see it. I mean, I can in person. I'm not sure if you can on the camera. But you can kind of see it through, but I think it's fine. Okay. So then I'm going to add this one back here. Again, I did not ink those edges. No need. But I did do my, my 5x7 stamp. So if you didn't have these add-on photo mats, there is a corresponding mat for this page. So you could just mat your page with that instead of the add-on photo mat. So if you wanted to 
um, put some pattern paper there instead. That's what you would use the mat for this this page specifically. Okay, it's, boy, it's get, look at how long that is. This is getting hard to maneuver. <laughs> I'm gonna put this page down first. And, oh, the mat, I might have to, I'm going to have to ink this one because the cardstock has got pattern, so you'll be able to see that I did not cut this out very well. I had a question the other day, and I can't remember where I read it. It was about what do I print? Um, uh oh. What do I? What was? What was the specific question? When I'm printing something out, what am I using? My my inkjet or my HP? My inkjet or my laser, basically. And the answer, there is no right answer to that because it just depends. I always print off like test sheets. So I kind of want this to look like a faux Polaroid because depending on your ink level or settings that you may have changed or something, um, your, your prints are going to look a little different every time. So I always, oh look, that's when I had my stamp ball caddy won't. It kind of looks even worse. Did I mess it up even worse? Maybe. Um, so it may be different uh, every time, but when I do work on a project, I do maintain that same, I do print, like if I'm printing the, um, the shades of color, I will print them all from whichever printer I chose at the time. So it doesn't, you know, I can't really tell you to always use your HP or always use your laser if you're gonna be printing off the shades of color because yours might be laying down more black or it might be compensating with more black or less black or there's all different reasons all different kinds of reasons why yours might be printing slightly different um, than mine so i don't want to say you have to use the only thing you have to use a laser for is if you want to if you want to foil like that script background for example or the diamond check background those things if you want to foil those black and white backgrounds that's the only thing you have to have a laser or a toner based um, printer like a, a copy machine or something like that um, but anyway so there is no right answer for that it just really depends on what goes when you print out a little test sheet it depends on what goes with your paper collection currently the best so look at how good that looks I kind of like I'm digging I'm digging these rounded corners I'm, I'm still thinking debating on what we're gonna do here because this is going to be right here, like that. So this is going to be laying up next to it. So I'm going to have to think on what would be good here. So we might do a flower, a flatter flower, or we might do a, um, what's that called? A wax seal. Now we're going to mat the envelope that goes in the belly band. I'm not going to mat the inside, I don't think. I didn't cut anything specific for the inside. But I do have my stuff ready already. Ready already? Okay. So, this piece here was from here. So, we've been cutting off a little bit of time of this sheet as well. And I traced the width that I needed and then I kind of centered it so this one this one was probably right here so I did kind of have it like a little square so I kind of centered it to where the B would be in the middle as best I could for this this will be on the like the flap right here and then here's another piece of that that we used on the inside of here right so I'm traced the mat out for this one on there I'm not going to put a magnet on this because it's going to be in a belly band. But then again, this could also be a good place for like a wax seal. So I don't know. So I'm just going to leave it be for now. So we're going to do this for that. Let's, let's attach them down. I thought I was running low on tape, but I'm Also kind of, oops, got you crooked. 
I kind of also want to point out that when I show you um, the mats that I've already got prepared, if I print it onto the cardstock directly, I will show you that. Um, but if it's if it's a mat like this that I've already got cut out and inked up and ready to go, most likely I have traced that out. Um, I mean, there might be a time where I might forget to show you where I printed on the 12 by 12, but. Um, if it's already ready like this, that means I have traced the mat out onto the pattern paper and not printed. So it looks like that. It looks nice, right? I don't know if I'm going to do anything here yet, but on the back side, here's the other part of that uh, pastel green vintage collage paper. This is just the plain green. Where was the? I have one more piece left of it right here. This is all I have left of the eight and a half by 11 sheet that I printed off, <laughs> but that's okay. So we're gonna put this here. I thought this was cute. And then this was fussy cut out of that same large sheet of paper. Cause look, I wanted to show you. There's where I fussy cut it out and inked it up. And so that's what it looked like on the back. <laughs> inked it up and I thought this might be cute. Down here it says, the earth has music for those who listen. And then I thought we could do a four by six photo mat like this. So I thought that might be kind of cute and not attach this all the way down so that you can actually put your photo, photo there, right? Isn't that cute? So that's what we're gonna do. And I didn't ink these edges either. Let me do that really fast. All right, let's attach the green down. This is so easy, but it's so pretty. And this, again, is just on copy paper, so we're cutting down on the bulk. That's one of the things I like about printable things is that you can print them as many times as you want. You can print them on whatever you want. You don't have, you're not limited. So I really like that. And I'm gonna put a little bit in the middle there. And I'm just gonna mat this. Plus, this looks really sharp, doesn't it? The black and the green together. I love that combination. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put this down first. You notice I didn't do any um, foil on anything. What? That was an oversight. Hmm, what to do, what to do. I just completely forgot all about that. I'm gonna, how can I add some foil to this page setup? Hmm. I guess I can add some to this before I put that down. I guess I could, let's see, what could I do? I guess I'm gonna have to add some bling with other embellishments on this one. Cause I was thinking about putting it, ah, I wish I would have. Let's see, since I just used tape runner, do you think I can pick it back up? Oh, yes I can. Okay, we're gonna add foil on these two pieces. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So I'm grabbing that piece of foil and my glue stick. We're gonna do it the exact same way we've been doing it. So we're gonna take our glue stick and we're gonna act like we're inking our edges. Just like that. Then burnish. I bet you guys are gonna be adding foil like to everything. I know I am. <laughs> this is such an easy, effective way to add a little something something. Whoops, now I'm stuck to my table here. 
So half of it's foiled, half of it's not. Doesn't it look super cool? Okay, let's do the other half. Yes! All right, come back here, paper. I'm gonna, I'm gonna glue, I'm gonna go ahead and stick you back down. It looks like the glue is still pretty much intact. Right? Bam. Never know. Look at that. That looks way, way better. I love it. Oh my gosh. Okay. So let's do this one really fast. I think if you give it a minute to dry, I think it works a little bit better, too. That was just an observation. So now we got some bling on here, and we got some glue stick. So we can just attach this down like that, and then we'll have a little bit of bling on the back. Yes! I'm going to use liquid glue just in case we don't want things getting stuck on tape type glue. Probably be a little more. Is that straight? So now you can still slip your, your photo down there. Looks fantastic. This was Art Glitter Glue. I love it. I might have to tack those little pieces down. So then this can go right in here like that. That looks awesome. I love it. It turned out really good. I love, love that. I'm glad we took that off. Okay. So that's all we're going to do today in this video. We're going to do the back side of the fin in the next video. I think I have it planned out for the most part, but we shall see. We shall see. I mean, I know what I think I want to do. Does that count as planning? <laughs> okay, you guys, you're going to have to let me know what you think. Give me a thumbs up. Be sure to check out the description box below for important um, links and important information. Don't forget to, subtri uh, to subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Hit that bell notification and turn those notifications on. Uh, we haven't put this in the, in the album yet because I want to do the back side first, I think, before we put it in the album. Um, but anyway, all right, you guys. I will see you next time. Bye.